There are a few things better than gaming than truly getting lost in a great open world game. These are the games that let you seep into their worlds, taking your time and soaking up all of those lore filled details. But what are the best of the best when it comes to PlayStation 5? Well, the Push Square team and I have worked up a collection of 10 that showcase the very best of the genre. Hello there fellow gamers, it's Aiden here from Push Square and here are the 10 best open world games on PS5. We're kicking off this list with one of the newest games in this collection. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth perfected the Yakuza formula with a thrilling and emotional story, that same wacky collection of side content and a new sun speckled setting in Hawaii. It's got a nice layer of diversity to it too, considering the game has that setting and the original Yokohama setting. If all of that wasn't quite enough, the game also has a full management sim I guess you'd call it in Dundoko Island. So while this game may not have the largest singular map in the list across its collection of settings, you have an immensely enjoyable experience and certainly one of the best in the long running Yakuza Like a Dragon series. Hogwarts Legacy was the exact kind of game that Potter fans were waiting years for. Now it may not rock the boat when it comes to the open world genre, but what it does do is it nails that setting, which is really what you're looking for in a tie-in IP just like this. Now I am not personally a Potter guy, but I know plenty of people that are, and for those fans, exploring Hogwarts and its grounds in their near entirety is an absolute delight. There are plenty of classes to attend, spooky forbidden woods to explore, broomstick flight to master, and plenty of tiny little details from the books and films to soak up. The game is enjoyable from its own merits, but if you have that love for the series, then Hogwarts Legacy is a guaranteed hoot. Death Stranding is a weird sort of game. This is Hideo Kojima, Hideo kojima with weird, overly complicated lore and a story that is, you know, it works for some people. I've always personally struggled with the narrative aspects of this game, finding them a little overdramatic. But one thing I absolutely love about Death Stranding is when it just sets you loose in its open world. The, the naysayers will tell you that this is a walking simulator, considering it's literally about delivering packages, establishing routes and avoiding combat almost entirely. But that is part of the magic sauce people because the real enemy is the environment and inventory management. Whether it's a dangerously deep river, a steep cliff's edge or maybe your cargo is a bit too heavy for this ankle snapping terrain. It gives Death Stranding a real survival aspect as you have to carefully plan routes and when it throws in a deadly BT shower it's even more intense. I just loved eventually building up roads and getting better vehicles the further I got into this weird open world experience, but it is still one worth investing in. Marvel Spider-Man 2 somehow manages to take a city that we've visited twice before and still make it as enthralling to explore as ever. This flashier, speedier and expanded take on New York City was somehow even more fun to swing and fly around in thanks to the tuned up swinging mechanic and the new web wing mechanics. Honestly, it could be on this list for the traversal alone. But thanks to the power of the PS5, New York City looks just as good down on the street level as it does from high up above. And it's forever impressive to zip from one perspective to the other in a moment's notice. There are plenty of cool wee easter eggs sprinkled around the map, along with some far improved and sometimes even emotional side missions to work through, all whilst coming to blows with the greatest hits of Spider-Man villains. If you liked the first game or Miles Morales then you really can't go wrong with Spider-Man 2. Next up we have Horizon Forbidden West, a gorgeous sequel that ushered players back into the post-post apocalypse of robot dinos and mighty tribal warriors. It took me a while before I eventually got round to this game, after thinking the first one was ah, alright, but there's something in Forbidden West that just elevates it beyond what came before. Maybe it's the refined combat which felt far more dynamic or possibly it's the grand scale which is utterly enormous this time round. For me though it was the balls to the wall sci-fi storyline which just rolls with it and I had to admire that. It meant discovering some iconic US landmarks all ancient looking very very fun indeed. Ghost of Tsushima is a special kind of open world. Its whole purpose is to help you immerse yourself in its setting which to me is the entire purpose of the open world genre. HUD is super minimal, you could even play the majority of this game without looking at its map thanks to the directional winds and the visual clarity 
emphasized tenfold with the PS5 Director's Cut, which just runs smooth as butter, looks sharp as a katana, and has some of the best haptics on the PlayStation 5. If you are looking for a gorgeous and cinematic open world experience, then this is your boy, because Tsushima is truly spectacular looking. I don't think I've messed around with photo mode more than with this game, but amidst all the beauty, the story in Ghosts is not afraid to get dark and gritty with some truly brutal and emotionally powerful moments. Now, I still vividly remember my first time on the island of Skellige in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. CD Projekt Red's PS4 masterpiece had a real eye for evoking a sense of place across its blood-speckled continent. Whether it was ramshackle villages or rugged landscapes of a foreign land, and all of that was only elevated thanks to the complete edition which saw a number of improvements arrive alongside a native PS5 version of the game. If rich fantasy settings are your thing, then The Witcher 3 is one of the best to ever do it. Sure, there are elements that have aged in the near decade since its original release, but at its heart is a spectacular story and setting that are more than worth the trip on their own. There's just something incredibly special about trotting across the untamed wilderness atop your trusty steed Roach while the excellent score lulls you into its world. Going from one fantasy setting to the next, Dragon's Dogma 2 has burst onto the PlayStation scene very recently and immediately claimed our number 3 spot in this list. Unlike The Witcher, which in many ways feels carefully crafted, Dragon's Dogma 2 is more about going with the flow. It lacks in the scripted moments, but more than makes up for that with its chaotic flow of emergent gameplay. In that, it then gives you what feels like an experience unique to you. The squad of pawns you've assembled, the class and ability build you've crafted, and the many ways you are pulled off course on your latest adventure. Dragon's Dogma 2 is the kind of game me and my mates have swapped tales over, recounting our various journeys like knights sitting around a campfire. It might not have been the case on launch, but Cyberpunk 2077 for us actually surpassed the genius of The Witcher 3. CD Projekt Red's commitment to this once ridiculed sci-fi RPG is one for the history books, as the story of V and Night City is now hailed as one of the best examples of the genre. The first-person perspective may not be for everyone, but it's the game's ability to craft expansive and impressive sci-fi city vistas that seamlessly transition to highly detailed interiors that really go the extra mile to selling the setting of Night City. And now, along with the game's DLC, The Phantom Liberty, it is in its fullest and most complete state, easily allowing it to stand as one of the all-time greats. There could only be one. Elden Ring takes the top spot, claiming the title of best open world game on PS5. This is from Software's Magnum Opus, a game that takes the once linear Souls genre and perfectly slots it into the open world design, putting exploration above all else. There are no markers to head towards, there are no skill trees to complete or side mission collectibles to work through. No, instead, Elden Ring wants you to explore its world with wonder and curiosity. What's in that tower? Where does this elevator go? What lurks within those woods? These are the sort of questions that ushered me across the lands between, and it made it a very natural feeling experience, making the discovery of new landmarks all the more enchanting. I don't think there's a game that's had me stop in awe quite so many times as I did in Elden Ring. And there you have it, our top 10 best open world games available right now on PlayStation 5. Please drop your own rankings down in the comments below. And while you're there, remember to leave a like and subscribe for more PlayStation video content just like this. Anyway, thank you as always for watching. And until next time, I've been Aiden and this has been Push Square.